For this project I'm back with reeds and making reed fishing floats. I really wanted another chance to explore some, some of the methods of making them. I may be experimenting with small scale manufacturing or just making them in quantity. Recently I visited Harrison's Rod Factory to film and I was really inspired by the way the people work there. The kind of care and attention to detail that goes into the process, as much as the machines and the technology. So in this project I wanted to bring some of that to my own little bench top factory. For the reeds I'm using a mix of lengths and also diameters. This will allow me to join pieces together and step down from the thicker bodies to the solid ends which I've made from bamboo skewers. As a quick temporary adhesive I'm using some super glue but also backing it up with some 5 mm epoxy. I can use this to smooth and fill out joints and also later to secure the line eyes that I've made from wire. For paints I'm using a mix of low odour acrylics, some bought from craft shops and others just the ordinary household variety. As a protective top coat I'm also using a clear acrylic lacquer that's been recommended by another English float maker, George Lockhart. As well as a range of basic tools like knives and sandpaper, I've also used some simple machines like a homemade paint dipper, which really takes the hassle out of making a drip-free paint job. And also for preventing the epoxy sagging before it cures, a little rotary jig. I'll cover the construction of these in the next video. And back from a previous project, the hand cranked lathe, which really proved itself invaluable. As in the previous video, I've trimmed up the reeds by wedging them against a standing knife blade and turning them first to score the outer layers, and then with slightly more pressure applied, cut through. For safety, my finger is mostly pressing on the handle, so my thumb doesn't end up on the blade. I can then select some smaller stems and test them for a fit on a bamboo skewer. The larger reeds that form the main part of the body can then be test fitted over these smaller reeds. Once I have a first selection to work from, I can start by sanding both ends of a larger diameter piece. As well as tidying up the fibres, this should also square up the ends. I can then match up the different size reeds, testing until I make a snug fit. And with a drop of super glue applied, they can be spun into place until they're held firm. Back with the standing knife, I can trim up the smaller reed, leaving a couple of millimeters proud, and then square up again with the sandpaper. For the other end, I can simply repeat the process. If I can't quite get a fit for the larger reed, I can use the reamer from the last project. This was made by wrapping some coarse sandpaper around a children's paintbrush handle and gluing it into place. Rather than use it with a cordless drill as previous, I'm going to get the Stanley hand drill out and mount it in my lathe setup. This is also from an older project where I used it to shape and sand bolts of float bodies. Despite being a bit of a relic, this device really wins out on being controllable, allowing me to turn threads into traditional float whippings with ease. I can start out by mounting the reamer in the chuck and use it to open up the reed slightly until the reducing piece fits snugly and I can glue cut and add it to the batch. Mounting the bodies back in the chuck, I can take some medium sandpaper and cut back the natural glossy coating on the reeds. This should give the lacquer a chance of properly bonding to the surface when it's coated later. To make the line tying end of the float, first I can select a bamboo skewer and mount it through the tailstock into the chuck. Using the longer blade of a craft knife and turning while I press down, makes for a clean cut. With a small nail, I can then roughly prick out the center point. 
and with a 1mm bit mounted in a pin vise, I can drill to a depth of about 8 to 10mm. Swapping to a larger 1.5mm bit, I can open it up a little. Later, this hole will be filled with a wire line tie. To set a uniform length to each piece, I'm using an off cut of wood as a measure. To shape the tip, a few turns with a pencil sharpener should leave a small chamfer. And finally, a once over with some fine sandpaper will clean things up and smooth out the edges. To fit it to the reed, I can push it into place and use the edge of a block to set the depth, before adding some super glue. For the tops, I'm going for a similar pattern, but using a slightly wider block to give me a bit more length. Again with a pencil sharpener, I can make a chamfer, but this time not as large. Once the sanding is complete, I can cut the piece through. Before fitting the tips, I need to paint them, and to do that, I can mount them in a jig, and when it's filled, move them to the dipping machine. The machine is fairly basic. The tips are lowered by a slow turning disco ball motor, down a draw slider for a guide. But painting with the machine has a few advantages. The controlled entry into the paint gives an even bubble free coat. And when the tips are retrieved because they're moving so slowly, any excess paint is pulled off, reducing the chances of any drips in the coat. And despite that slow speed, it's a lot quicker than painting by hand. The white I've used is a base coat for a neon orange tip paint, which is applied in the same way. And later, to finish the float, I can change to a clear coat. That's really all for this video. In the second part, I'll deal with finishing the floats and also building the machines, and just possibly get to do some fishing. If you've enjoyed this video, and you'd like to support my channel, please share this video to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, or whatever social media you're addicted to. For feedback or to ask questions, leave a comment below. To see more Handmade Fisherman videos, follow the link to my channel, or to be notified of future videos, please subscribe. And finally, thanks for watching.